So down there is the nasty drain I used to film the LP838 review and over here is our washing machine and uh, over here is the power point I used to power the light which uh, made that uh, nasty drain a bit less uh, uh, entirely dark and invisible and I had to unplug the washing machine in order to get to it and uh, plugging it back in It seems to have turned into a counter-strike bomb. So we're going to have to take this machine apart and uh, try and figure out what's wrong with it because we don't have a spare and uh, yeah, it's entirely non-responsive. It's usually just uh, always said a beep once and it's gone to standby. Now it's a bit of an odd issue because even if I unplug it, uh, it keeps beeping for quite considerable time. So. You know, normally when you see something like this, you go, oh, there, that's going to be a capacitive drop in the power supply, it's not going to be able to start because the cap's gone bust and you'd replace that and be all gone. But uh, the fact that it keeps going uh, suggests to me that we've got uh, ample supply voltage because the capacitor that's uh, just keeping everything running obviously has enough charge in it to keep it rebooting and rebooting and rebooting and rebooting. So. Either this thing has a bit of a more fancy power supply than that, or there's something more devious wrong with it. Uh, it is a relatively new machine, probably five or six years old. It does have a label. Made in Korea, it's a mo model WD12231TB. Uh, no real data code of that though. Uh, so I'm just going to have to rip this thing apart and uh, get the piece of out and have a look. One Asus branded work light installation later, uh, I've got the machine somewhat disassembled. It's very easy to get apart, it's just a couple of screws in the corner, so the entire top of the machine slides back and lifts off. And we pretty much have a view of all the electronics y stuff in here, and this certainly looks quite a bit more high tech than I was anticipating. Uh, so, this is definitely going to be a switch mode power supply. But yeah, we've got a primary cap there, some little tiny caps of there, could be, they look to be prime, no, no, they're probably secondary side sensor on the other side of that transformer. Uh, lots of little electrolytics all around, really. So, not country related, it's an, a capacitor issue, but we've also got big black heatsink there. And uh, I'd wager there's some horrible proprietary SDK type module stuck underneath it and if that one's done for, then this board is done for, and perhaps the entire machine. Uh, but yeah, I think the first course of action is going to be to just heat this board up and see if it starts, because if uh, that uh, brings it back to life, then it's likely to be a capacitor issue, probably one of these small, tiny ones, so, or, or perhaps even a solder joint. Uh, it's uh, going to be annoying working on either way, because we've got everything potted in this really thick, goopy uh, potting compound. Which probably does a very good job at keeping the water out, but yeah, that's a bit all the good it does. Yeah, heating time. All right, the board is now nice and warm, and I've gotten myself an energy meter, so let's uh, see what happens. Oh, did that do the trick? It did have a bit of a struggle, but yep. We're back online. So that's great news. That means it's highly likely that we've got a bad cap in there. And we've got a red LED showing us when it's on. Excellent. So yeah, it's probably going to be one of the little boys. Mm -hmm. Could even be a relay in there. There's a little tiny relay there, which made a little rattly noise, which I didn't quite fancy. But yeah, I'm pretty certain that the issue is going to be on that board and it's going to come out either way. And the entire front panel module pops out quite handily with the front panel PCB which is just one of those cheaper boards uh, and the big power supply on the back but uh, the horrible part about this is that this entire thing is potted into the plastic and uh, you can peek in through these little holes there and there doesn't seem to be any a gap and opening in this white plastic on the underside of a board uh, so basically I'm gonna have to carve this entire board out in order to be able to probe anything 
Uh, we do have access to probe a couple of these captains that mounted not flush to the board, so I might just do that uh, for starters, but uh, yeah, this is not going to be fun if I have to actually replace anything. Uh, as for the board itself, it seems to be a number 6871ER9010A, Yoro's BRDC, and apparently, yes, uh, dated 2006, so yeah, it's pretty much 10 years old, this machine. And it's been sitting connected to the grid for pretty much all that time, so I suppose you really uh, can't fault it for finally giving in. Anyway, I'm going to probably be back once I've carved all this crap out. Back in a few hours. Alright, a few calculated cuts uh, and a vigilant attempt to cut the rectifier diode in half. Uh, thankfully a failed one. Now, later, I have been able to uh, find a probable cause for uh, the failure. Uh, uh, this capacitor, which is right here, uh, this one by the uh, top uh, 234 or something. Oh, what's that I see? A top 243 a YN. Uh, heating this thing will basically cause the machine to boot instantly, and it's right by the power LED. So I'm hoping that that's going to be the issue. Uh, there are some Xeno diodes and stuff in there which could also be a part of the issue, but I used a very tiny nozzle on the uh, hot air rework station, and it, it yeah, this capacitor seemed very likely to be the culprit. Uh, it actually measured quite fine. It's a 47 microfarad 35 volt, and you know, testing it on the uh, capacitance and ESR meter, it pretty much checked out. And I f at first, I figured uh, it's not going to be the issue, but I replaced it with a 100 microfarad you know, low ESR proper cap, and I guess we'll, we're just going to have to have another test. Uh, if that one proves to be the issue, then I'm probably going to have to replace these three as well because they're identical as to uh, that one. Although I had probed these a bit and uh, they too seem to check out. Uh, did I make a hole? No, I didn't make a hole. Uh, but yeah, these seem pretty okay. Uh, this is a one phase in microfarad, 25 volts, uh, and I think these two are 470.35. Yeah, 470.35, Sam Young brand, all of them. Uh, which isn't a too bad of a manufacturer, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, test this board again with a new cap there. Our other board is at room temperature, and uh, everything should be connected, so well, let's go. Boots up perfectly. I'm not going to touch this, I'm not certain if it's alive with mains or not. Probably not, but yeah, that that's a pretty good improvement. No startup issues at all. Not a hint. And that red LED is staying lit quite a bit longer. Let's try it again. Yep, we're gonna have that's that was the issue, no doubt about it. So uh, that means I'm gonna have to make another hole in the uh, plastic and replace these three caps as well because I'm not going to trust them. And there we go, I just uh, repotted everything with uh, hot glue. We'll see how well that works and stuck some parts <laughs> of the original plastic back where they came from. It's not pretty, but you don't have to see this anyway. Uh, so we have a new caps, uh, all forces of a microfarad, and uh, we'll have to see how well that potting compound really holds together. Uh, there doesn't seem to have been any real moisture issues in this machine though. Uh, there's no trace of corrosion on the board, which is not on the control board, which is uh, not potted at all. So I don't think we're going to have any issues. It's going to turn out quite alright. So all I've got to do is just uh, mount this back together and uh, order more hot glue because this consumed a lot. And on a somewhat unrelated note, uh, uh, something which just struck me uh, as a bit odd is that this board does have this uh, very charred looking resistor uh, right by a few of these uh, multi uh, pole connectors. Uh, and uh, at first I figured that would be a considerable part of the issue, but uh, yeah, it measures relatively okay. It should be 330k from what I can see in the markings, and uh, it, measuring across it doesn't give you a result above that, so. 
Uh, I don't think this resistor is actually an issue. Uh, why it's burned though is uh, anybody's guess. I really can't see. Uh, if it's going to become an issue in the future, I guess we'll find out because uh, I still haven't tested if this machine will actually still run. There could be some follow-up issue from it just going in cycling like that or having excess ripple on that power feed. But that remains to be seen. Oh, there we go, all put back together, save for the top. Uh, I took the opportunity to uh, clean it all the crud out of it. There was literally uh, a decade's worth of uh, just crap and crust uh, stuck in there and all the pipe work uh, and uh, yeah let's just say that there was a lot of shit coming out the front of the drain down there so I think this machine is going to do a quite good job at cleaning in the future if it decides to start working now so uh, everything should be back together I, there shouldn't have been any water on the electronics since I didn't have any when I did the cleaning uh, it's going to be pretty drenched down there but I, I'm pretty sure there isn't any actual stuff in there it seems to be just uh, the bottom of a drum uh, but who knows it might explode let's just uh, uh, give it a go uh, where's the power cord? there's the power cord so it should say beep once and uh, start up for us Uh, 2 watts standby consumption, not too bad for a 10 year old device. So it's going to run. That looks pretty good. Oh, wow, that looks so bad on the camera. Jeez. I'm just going to... Let's just let it run a 95 degree uh, empty cycle to really finish the cleaning out. Uh, no centrifuge. And, yeah. Let's see what it does. Bang! Oh, that, that's no water supply. Right, so take two with water. That's better. Pulling it up through the nicely cleaned out supply. And it's, yeah, I can be able to see it. It's running the drum, filling it up. Uh, it's probably gonna drain it up pretty soon. Well, that looks excellent. So, in one hour and 33 minutes, we're gonna know whether or not this is a fix. And it just finished its cycle. Is the hatch unlocked? The hatch is unlocked. There's no water inside. And I'd say this machine is working excellent now. So all that remains to do is fiddle this thing back on, like so. Put in the two screws and uh, call in support to get it back up there. As far as the original capacitors go, they're, they're really not too bad. Uh, this is one which uh, caused a failure, which uh, is at 1 ohm and 44 microfarad. Now if we probe on the others, yeah, they're about the same. And normally I I would say that an ohm for a 40, 47 microfarad is, well it's a bit on the high side. But it's certainly not entirely bad. And if we have just to grab one brand new out of a box, a uh, Nichicon uh, PS 47 microfarad 50 volt. It's not going to be too far off. Yeah, about 800 milliohms and 49 microfarads, so that's not a huge difference at all, really. As far as impedance is concerned, I'd basically rate these capacitors identically. I mean, it's pretty much within the margin of error, and it's warming up, warming up from my fingers. So, I don't know, it must be that either something else has drifted in spec in that machine, perhaps that uh, a power resistor. Uh, or it's just been designed so just at the limit that uh, essentially capacitor dropped from 4 to 7 microfarads, bang, it's gone. But either way, there's 100 microfarads there now, which should not be an issue for quite a considerable amount of time in the future if that's the case. So, thank you for watching. Cheerio.